Well, that's an original instrumental that I put together after being a couple of months in a room with the open D tuning and trying to arrange a lot of the tunes I had wanted to arrange for years and years. Well, what usually comes out is something original, which you may have robbed, or may, maybe I may have robbed, a couple of licks from here, from there, who knows what. But you put them together and you start to express what you have inside yourself as a musician and as a person. Now one of the, the things with this instrumental, one of the, the key notes that I discovered was when we've been going up 
to the middle of the neck and doing things like around this position. Well, I found that if I went to the seventh fret, that allowed me to bring the note up further and to get a real sweet sound, a sound that I found very evocative. So I was sitting on the couch, starting off as if I was playing Vestapool. Now that's a tune I teach on another DVD lesson. And Vestapool was an instrumental. This is an interesting story. Was an instrumental that was actually written in 1854. It came out as the name Sebastopol because it celebrated a battle from the Crimean War in 1854. And that tune was played, the Sebastopol was played in an open D tuning, strangely enough. And somehow that tune, which was sort of a pseudo classical piece of music, got into the repertoires of black and white players from the South. Originally, that type of music, Sebastopol, was being composed for women who were playing parlor guitar music. And that's a whole study all into itself. The name somehow changed from Sebastopol to Vestapool, and you can hear Elizabeth Cotton doing Vestapool. You can hear shadows of it, reflections of it in tunes by Robert Wilkins, by Furry Lewis, by Mississippi John Hurt. Most of the players, especially around the Memphis area, they used the motifs from that tune. So if you, I was going to play Vestapool, that would be the first phrase. But what I did, I then stopped it, went up here, and then tried to really control that note. So it's slide, to give a little vibrato. So you bring it up, and when you bring it down, then you do some shaking. That's just hammering on. We've done this before. And then repeat that line. Now I'm alternating the bass between the six and the four, but sometimes I can play it. You hear the difference there? I changed it to that six, four, five, four bass. And you can do one verse with six, four, and then change it to the 6454 four for the second verse. Well, that's the first line of the tune, and then it goes into that G chord, but with our ring finger on the second fret of the first string. Lift it up, put it down in the second fret of the second string, open, and then I go into this position. So this I found really, again, a very interesting position to use, and it's gives me a sound that I really enjoy. You take your middle and your ring fingers and you slide them up to the fifth frets of the third and the sixth string. And that allows us to put down our index finger on the first fret of the, excuse me, the fourth fret of the first string. So you can alternate between the six, four, and then play that third string and the first string together. So we have Slide up, hammer, and then open. Into the hour A7, back to that same position, but this time we're going to put our index finger on the fourth fret of the second string and get that melody. all together let me 
do that properly, right away, that's it. So that's the verse. Slowly, and it all depends on tone now. Repeat that line. Vibrato. Walk down into that G. There's an alternative way of playing the G. Into the A seventh. Back to that new position. I was playing this for oh, a couple of weeks, just that phrase, and just having fun because it's very soothing to my ears. Then I thought, well, let me see if I can put a second section to this, make it even more interesting. And I came upon this great chord, where I'm going to have my ring finger on the fourth fret of the sixth string, middle finger on the third fret of the third string, and index finger second fret of the second string. And I decided to try to do a bass that would go slide up. So what am I doing here? I slide up with my ring finger and then I hit the third string and I get this pinch with the second and the fourth string. Now I have the open first string, then the bass, hit the second string, and I pull off my middle finger that was on the third fret of the third string. So all together. And again, resolving it. Do it again. And now, I go into a G position just barring, and I put down my middle and ring fingers and getting this sound. And they're going down to the 6th fret of the 3rd string and ring finger the 7th fret of the 2nd string. You could actually do the full chord. And what this would be echoing is if you had an open and then you just played a, a G chord. D. So I'm using that, but I'm just taking, wanting the second and third strings, and I'm going to play something like this. And go back to a phrase that, that brings out the, that note that we had from our first and our verse. So it goes like this so far. Pull off, everything off. Slide, pull off. Repeat the whole phrase. And again. again. Now into the first position, A, seventh, 
and then move it up three frets. And then we have. So we're going to do that position and pick around it and do that position and pick around it and open. So we have slide up. Putting it together. Seventh, change. So now we have two sections for our instrumental, and two is a good number. You know, my mother-in-law, when she was alive, used to say one for sorrow, two for joy. So whenever you had to, or well, she offered you a cookie or a piece of candy, and if you only took one, she said one for sorrow, two for joy. So likewise with an instrumental. You have to have at least two sections, but three, and well, three is the magic number from as far as I'm concerned. So I tried to figure out what could be a, a third section, and I came up starting with this chord gave me an idea, and I started to hear all these voicings, these harmonies. So in fact, if you start off just with open. And now put your middle finger and index finger on the second fret of the sixth string, and the index finger on the first fret of the third, and then pinch them. Go up two frets. Go back to that position. Go back. You can even go further up. The seventh fret. Add perhaps a little bit of melody in the high string. instrumental with three sections. A lot of fun just to play this. And how about we try it with a split screen and see if we can play it together.
that bass now. 